So now on to my next weld, and that's concerning the shaper. Anyone who's seen at least one video starring this machine knows that the vice is not the greatest regarding its clamping pressure, and that's due to the nature of the thing itself. Um, it's two moving jaws, which essentially doubles the travel of the jaws per revolution, and therefore the lever forces are cut in half. And that's also the clamping forces, of course. Now, that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that this thing has a crack in the base. And that means that whenever I do heavier cuts, um, the thing moves. It tilts away from the cut. Now what I've done to counteract that is move the crack over on this side so that it's not pulled up, but rather pushed down onto the crack. But uh, it's still far from ideal. So with the freshly gained confidence that I suck at welding, and never having welded cast iron before, I think we have a perfect base to now weld the crack in this thing shut. Can you see the crack? It promenades right through the 90 degree mark and if you look closely it even penetrates through the base here. The good thing is, well as far as good is concerned, it does the same thing on the rear and both ends of the crack go right to a bolt hole. You can see a black shadow right in the top of your picture. And then right down here is a bolt and some threads cut. And that's where the crack originates and where it ends. So the crack starts right here. It goes around here continues over the top and then vanishes down here right by the same hole that it started at. In case you couldn't tell by my welds, I am not a professional by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I never even welded cast iron before. So all I know is the theory that you should preheat it. Then you of course need a special electrode which is this one. This is a chrome nickel electrode. And you should not just go ahead and weld and weld and weld, but you should do short beads. Now this is here is about two centimeters, let's say, so we can lay one bead at a time. But in between the beads, I'm going to let it cool off completely. Maybe even go at it with a torch again and reheat it up so it's not getting shocked that much. Another good idea is to take your hammer and hammer onto the weld joint you just made as it cools down. Because the metal as it cools is going to shrink and by hammering it you're going to spread it outwards again and reduce the uh, stress in the weld. I cannot weld everything on this thing. You know, there is angles that I can't reach. But what I'm going to do is machine a V in here and machine a V over here in order to create surface for a weld bead. Lay that across there and hope it's going to be enough to stop the crack from redeveloping.
Okay, I gradually wound down the flame over the last, say, five to ten minutes. And I think that's enough now. Uh, the professionals have like a sand bath or so, or wrap this in asbestos blankets, something like that. I don't have any of that, but uh, given that it's like suspended in air and it's not touching anything cold, I mean the vice is pretty hot as well. Um, I think we can leave it, let it cool down like this, slowly, not rush anything. And uh, that should keep the stress in there to a minimum. So here's the weld after a day of cooling. You can see there's quite a few holes in here, which is to be expected with cast iron, unfortunately. Taking a look at the top, here are two holes as well. And down in there we have one more. I did go ahead and weld the underside because there was just that remnants of a crack and I would just say if I didn't weld over that then the crack would just start forming right there. Luckily I cannot see any micro cracks in here because if there was one then we might as well stop doing anything right now. But since there is no cracks we can now start off machining the weld away at the areas critical and he is praying that the weld didn't get you know extremely hard stainless steel tends to work harden when it gets too hot and we've made this quite hot we'll see how it goes it's moving it's moving since that didn't work, we're going to go at it the old-fashioned way. Luckily, the weld isn't as hard as I had feared. Or is it? Well, you asked for it. I hate to say it, but on the very last cut, a chip got caught on the insert and the surface here is very, very rough. Not ideal, but nothing I can really do about it. And instead of grinding it out again and welding it up again, I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, put all back on the shaper, put the top on. Hope it doesn't crack. Okay, the vice is fixed for now at least, and time is going to tell whether the weld is going to hold up or not. I am reasonably confident because I mean I took every measure I could take in order to prevent a stress buildup. We'll see. I mounted it so that the weld is facing forward, which would mean that the cutting force is actually pressing it down instead of levering up on it, which it would do if it was mounted on the rear. So, um, yeah. I think it's nonetheless a proven test for the welding generator. I hope I'm going to have a couple of projects at least to use this in the future on. And even if I don't, this thing is kick ass, I love it. Hope so do you. And that's it for this video, see you next time, bye.